Trans 3 humor is widely regarded as cringe. But why is that? And is it true? I'd like to answer both of those questions, but we'll start with the is it true. Yes. Okay, the rest of the video will be devoted to answering why that is. But before I start, I would just like to say that comedy is the most subjective thing in the world. For example, if you don't think my channel is funny, then that means I'm just not your cup of tea. But if you don't think Borderlands 3 is funny, it means you are correct. I just played through all of Borderlands 3 and even left the volume and subtitles on for you guys. The root of the problem with Borderlands humor to me is the characters. They are annoying. Not all of them, just the ones that are supposed to be the comedic characters. Claptrap is the best example of this because he wasn't annoying in the first game, and that's why he became so popular. But as the series went on, they inexplicably, purposefully made him unliked by the other characters in the game and accidentally unliked by everyone else. Follow me, recruit, to glory! They seem to think making a character obnoxious and loud makes them funny. There was this mission where you were supposed to find a new antenna for Claptrap, and I genuinely wanted to choose one, but he made an awful joke every time you cycled through to the next one. Now when people tell me to go fork myself, I can say I already did! So I just said fuck it and left. The approach to these comedic characters is very, very one-dimensional. For example, Vaughn. For those unfamiliar, Vaughn was a character that started in Tales from the Borderlands, a Telltale game not written by Gearbox, and it was much better written. In that, he was a much more complex character and there was just more to him. Around the end, there was a little joke about how he had abs, but he seemed like a nerdy guy that wouldn't be in great athletic shape. This became his entire character in Borderlands 3. I mean, look, my my clan only accepted me as a leader after I killed a guy with just my abs. Well, that and shouting movie quotes. Which is Borderlands' other idea of funny, constant references. Shoot me now, will ya? I like to hang, but not like this. Not like this! I hope in the sequel he gets really into silent films. But most Vaughn jokes are about him being in good shape. You hear that, Tyrene? Now worship! AT THE ALTAR OF MY ABS! They seem near endless, and one or two may have been funny, but it is every punchline holy Christ. The joke loses its original humor so quickly, considering the original joke was the juxtaposition between his nerdy personality and his athletic body. But he even loses that nerdy personality and just becomes a douche that only talks about his body. You know, after I refused to join that stupid cult, Tyrene Calypso put a bounty on my sculpted ass. It'd be like if I constantly brought up my abs, or my gargantuan for that matter. Those things aren't punchlines, they're just facts. Facts, like if my penis went supernova, it would create a black hole. That's just something physicists told me. Nine out of ten physicists say that, and one out of ten physicists has a jealousy problem, Eric. <laughs> okay, we just had a lot of fun with some dick humor, but now it's over. And that's the problem with Borderlands 3. It's never over. It's okay to not be subtle sometimes, but typically for blunt humor to work, you have to not see it coming. Borderlands screams not subtlety at you through the entirety of the game. The villains in this one are purposefully annoying caricatures of streamers. What up, my fans and or fans? God Queen Tyrene coming at you live from the HBC. We're streaming, you're screaming, and we're all preparing to get into the great vault. It's incredible how many characters they made annoying on purpose, considering how many characters they also made annoying on accident. It gets genuinely difficult to tell where the line even is. This absolutely destroys their attempts at satire throughout the game. They seem to just recreate something note for note in the real world instead of making fun of it more indirectly, which is the entire point of satire, to come at something from a different angle to show how ridiculous it is. The Echo Net Neutrality mission is a great example of this. It's just the net neutrality problem. I would explain it more, but it is literally just the net neutrality problem, except it's the echo net. Compare this to a hard drive headline. They're a video game satire website, and they're super fucking funny. Great writers, go check them out. It's making fun of video game puzzles you use to hack or fix electronics by showing how funny it would be if an IT guy used those same methods. This is how satire works. Not just by saying it's funny how there are video game puzzles, which is exactly what the Borderlands approach is. It bombards you with constant references and easter eggs, which all blend together with the satire in an overwhelming soup of not knowing if anything that is original idea or just a reference you are unaware of. Borderlands 3 also has a problem with where its punchlines lie. They will have a super obnoxious character interacting with a character that is not obnoxious, or at the very least less obnoxious. We got a great lineup of contestants today, including a vault thief fighting for the sex-alicious Miss Moxie. 
And anyone familiar with comedy will tell you the laughs from that dynamic will come from the obnoxious character being obnoxious and then the not obnoxious character reacting to it. The laugh comes from the character we like. That's how comedy typically works. People want to laugh along with the likable character as they make fun of a shitty one. Borderlands 3 typically doesn't do this. Hey, Marcy's crew, how about I put my positive with your negative? Hey, let's see if we can make the sparks fly. It will just have an obnoxious character say an obnoxious thing and that's that. They do have some reactions to that character as if to say, we know they're a bad person, but it's very clear they thought the punchlines would rest with them. It's so frustrating this game came out the way it did because it had so many talented voice actors. They had Ray Chase come in to voice Reese, another Tales from the Borderlands character. He was formerly voiced by Troy Baker, who of course also did a great job, but the character still manages to be ruined in a similar way to Vaughn, where all character complex is removed from him. This is borderline impressive given the talent of the voice actor and the actual pre-existing character that was handed to them. This happens with so many characters voiced by great actors here though. It's as if the director stopped before each scene and went, okay, your motivation is that you're insufferable. So many characters are just out of touch stereotypes as well. This one that's just a boomer's impression of a millennial is neat. Oh, hey. What can I do to, like, help you? Or whatever? I've never met a millennial that talks like this, and I am one. The reason I said earlier that the problem with this game's humor rested with the characters and not the writing is because I remembered Handsome Jack and what a great villain he was from 2. This, along with some of the serious characters being more well-written, led me to believe it seemed as if they could write for a good one. But as I wrote the script, I started to think more and more about how they fumbled great characters that were just handed to them by Telltale. So now it's hard to tell what the problem really even is. Yes, there are some funny lines here and there in the game, but this video was to discuss why the vast majority of the game fails at humor by showing their basic misunderstanding of comedy writing. I am going to review the gameplay and some of the main story in a separate video. That one will have many more positive things to say. I felt like this topic would be better handled in its own video, but it is a game and gameplay is paramount even though this game did everything in its power to scream over that gameplay. It's still the move of a truly pretentious douche to review a game's writing and not its gameplay, and I've seen more of that than I would like. So that video will be out in a couple of days. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I will see you then.